Dark openings may very well be one of the generally captivating and baffling peculiarities in the universe. They are enormous monsters regarding power, yet at a similar time, essentially imperceptible to us. A dark opening weighing maybe two to four multiple times the mass of the sun is a great representation. As a result of the exploration that was placed into them over the last years, we've gone from knowing literally nothing about them to getting to find out increasingly more. What's more, individual while things have simply gotten more insane. Makaku recently declared that we at last got to check what's inside a dark opening. This new data carries light to the subtleties the universe of science could have missed from the start. Join us as we dig further into dark openings and disclose what's inside. Space is huge and terrible. Before we dive into the subtleties of what Makaku found, we need to discuss the firsts. Despite the fact that the vast majority of us have some thought of what dark openings are, there are still a few holes in the right data. You see, in 1916, Albert Einstein distributed his hypothesis of general relativity, which anticipated the presence of dark openings. Around then, the idea of dark openings was simply hypothetical. It required an additional 50 years for the logical community to track down proof that dark openings really exist. This occurred in the 1960s when they were contemplating the Cygnus heavenly body and saw an strangely dazzling blue star producing X-rays. This star was definitely not a stale item, but was circling around a Goliath dark something. Upon additional examination, it was observed that the X-rays weren't simply moving around all alone, but were being sucked into the dark thing they were circling. Accordingly, the name Dark Opening. This revelation was critical in light of the fact that it gave confirmation that dark openings as a matter of fact exist, and that they were not simply a fantasy of Albert Einstein's wild creative mind. While that was extraordinary, it too intended that there was this stunning substance in space that we critically had to be aware more about. Analysts overall around the world got to work. This dark opening was named Cygnus X1, and it is situated in the star grouping Cygnus around 6,000 light years from Earth. It was no small revelation. It's multiple times more brilliant than the Sun and unimaginably thick, which makes it have areas of strength for a pull. The gravitational draw is areas of strength for so that not even light can get away from it. This is the reason it is known as a dark opening. The idea of a dark opening is both entrancing and terrifying. It is an area of space where gravity is so solid that nothing, not even light, would be able. Circumventing whatever gets excessively near a dark opening won't be maneuvered into it ever to be seen again. However, that part of peril makes it significantly more important to learn all that there is to be aware of them. Was this it? Or were we just starting? The response turned out to be the last option. After the revelation of Cygnus X1, researchers began to look for other dark openings. They found that there might be near more than 100 million dark openings in the smooth way alone. But since they are so staggeringly difficult to recognize, we still try not to have a definite number. All things considered, from the vibes of it, there are a few million dark openings in the smooth way and our very cosmic system, which is what makes them significantly more essential to study. So how about we separate it? The principal concern with dark openings is continuously going to be gravity. Their gravitational draw is so serious that anything that enters it packs down cosmically until it turns into a peculiarity. In easier terms, dark openings resemble inestimable vacuum cleaners that suck everything in. One of the most terrifying parts about the exploration that has gone into dark openings is the reality that if somebody somehow managed to fall into one, they would cut to the chase that they become a solitary line. This cycle would happen gradually, and the individual would pass on before the last structure as a matter of fact sets in. So we should simply say that nobody ought to step into one. Except for they're everywhere, so might we at any point truly be in peril? Regardless of the way that the nearest dark opening to Earth is 500 to 1,000 light years away, it's actually close enough to raise questions and worries. In 2021, researchers had the option to deliver the first clear photo of a dark opening explicitly the M87 dark opening. This dark opening was shot a few evenings in succession, and with each photo, the specialists accumulated to an ever-increasing extent proof about it. They needed to join the individual photographs together to make something that filled every one of the holes. This way, they had the option to sort out that there are three layers to a dark opening. It's not only one single expanding opening of nothingness, 
as many individuals accept. Things are significantly more confounded than that. To try and get to the nothingness part of a dark opening, you need to make it through the initial two layers. The first layer is known as the occasion skyline, which is the final turning point. Once you pass the occasion skyline, there's no turning back, and you will be sucked into the dark opening. It just deteriorates from that point on out. The subsequent layer is the photon circle, which is the locale where light circles the dark opening. Any light that enters this locale will be caught and cannot get away from the dark opening's gravitational force. At long last, we come to the third layer, which is the peculiarity. This is where all that enters the dark opening gets packed down cosmically until it turns into a peculiarity. The peculiarity is a point in space-time where the laws of physical science as we probably are aware them separate, and we just can't anticipate what occurs next. At the peculiarity, the thickness is boundless, and the laws of physical science as we probably are aware them quit existing. Now, what makes all of this vastly more terrible is the way that each and every dark opening you study will be altogether not the same as the last. Sure, they in all actuality do tend to follow a similar three-layer idea, but the manner in which they function could be boundlessly unique. Now, if this were anything more, all we want to do is bounce back on those telescopes and just concentrate on the main pressing issue exhaustively. Yet, with dark openings, you can't actually do that. Researchers can concentrate on dark openings in a roundabout way by noticing the radiation they produce and the gas and residue that encompasses them. Sending a test like the Explorer inside a dark opening isn't conceivable because anything that enters the occasion skyline is pulled towards the peculiarity, where it is compacted to an boundlessly little point. So you can't precisely squander billions of dollars just to get an impression each time because the second the test draws near enough, it'll simply squash into nothingness. Due to that incredibly obvious issue, researchers are left with no choice except for to study these objects in a two-layered manner, even though they are three-layered peculiarities. To make matters much more challenging, there are additionally the two issues of each and every dark opening being exceptional and the laws of material science as we realize them separating when we attempt to investigate within. This implies that the conventional techniques for logical requests don't actually apply to the review of dark openings. That doesn't really intend that the analysts haven't been occupied. There are loads of various hypotheses and clarifications of dark openings, and with every one, things get to an ever-increasing extent fascinating. One of the most convincing hypotheses about the arrangement of dark openings is that they are made from falling stars. When a star debilitates all its fuel, it can never again create enough energy to balance the power of gravity that is continually pulling internal. Thus, the star begins to break down in on itself, decreasing what's more, denser. If the star is adequately monstrous, this interaction can go on until it turns into a peculiarity. To comprehend the nature of dark openings top to bottom, NASA researchers directed their concentration toward the center of the universe, M87. Cosmologists noticed a really strong whirlpool of very hot hydrogen gas that was turning at a surprising pace of 1.2 million miles per hour. The sheer power of the turning plate of gas ought to have caused it to fly separated in all brutally directions, but it didn't. Researchers derived that there must be a monster mass aggregated at the focal point of the system to keep this from occurring. This monstrous item weighed as much as 2 to 3 billion suns and must be a dark opening. But that is not by any means the only hypothesis where dark openings turn. In 1963, the New Zealand mathematician Royer utilized Einstein's conditions of gravity to give the best depiction of a turning dark opening. They showed that a turning dark opening wouldn't implode into a point, as recently suspected, but into a ring of fire or a slender circle. The circle would turn so quickly that diffusive powers would keep it from imploding. This turning circle of issue is known as the aerosphere and it is the area encompassing the dark opening where the laws of material science begin to separate. In any case, the most charming element of Kurur's arrangement was that it anticipated the presence of an Einstein-Rosen extension, otherwise called a wormhole. This hypothetical entry through space-time could interface two separate areas of the universe or even two equal universes. The thought is that assuming one were to fall into a dark opening, rather than being squashed to blankness, one would be sucked down a passage through the ring of shoot and shot out a white opening in an equal universe. To grasp how this works, we want to take a gander at the concept of space-time. In Einstein's hypothesis, 
Space-time is the texture of the universe where objects with mass twist this texture, making a gravitational field that makes different articles push toward them. Presently, envision a piece of paper addressing space-time. Assuming you place two focuses on the paper and define a boundary between them, this is a portrayal of how items travel through space-time. But imagine a scenario in which you could overlap the paper 50 and make an easy route between the two focuses. This is the fundamental thought behind a wormhole, an easy route through space-time that associates two far-off focuses in a moment. Wormholes aren't simply a science fiction idea. They are really a forecast of general relativity. Albeit nobody has at any point noticed one straightforwardly, the reason is that worm openings are intrinsically shaky and would implode nearly promptly. However, the presence of an Einstein-Rosen extension would intend that dark openings are not simply enormous vacuum cleaners, but could likewise be gateways to different areas of space-time. So could we utilize a wormhole to go through space and time? Sadly, the response is likely no, not yet at any rate. Regardless of whether we could settle a wormhole, it's impossible that we could utilize it to travel quicker than light. Einstein's hypothesis of unique relativity predicts that the speed of light is an outright cutoff on how quick anything can go through space-time. Yet, and still, after all that, the hypothesis of wormholes and dark openings as pathways to other portions of the universe or even to various times has been a subject of interest and theory among physicists for a really long time. The possibility that there may be easy routes through the texture of space-time permitting travel over significant stretches or indeed, even into the past, might actually be progressive if we could as a matter of fact accomplish it. One of the most captivating ideas around here of study is the Kerr wormhole, named after the mathematician Roy Kerr, who first depicted it utilizing Einstein's conditions of gravity. This kind of wormhole is basically a theoretical passage through space-time that could interface two far-off focuses, for example, two distinct universes or even two distinct times inside a similar universe. The dog wormhole is frequently envisioned as a ring-formed entryway, like the mirror in the account of Alice in Wonderland. Walking through the looking glass moved Alice to an existence where creatures talked in questions and rationale didn't necessarily in every case apply. Similarly, going through the mutt ring could possibly transport a voyager to another universe or some other time where the laws of physical science may be very unique in relation to those we are natural with. Yet, at the objective, that could simply be typical. While the possibility of wormholes for the purpose of interstellar travel or time travel is absolutely energizing, as we bypassed before, it's likewise a subject of discussion and discussion among physicists. Some have brought up that wormholes, especially mongrel wormholes, may be unsound or difficult to navigate due to the serious radiation and subatomic powers encompassing their entry. Pundits contend that Einstein's conditions of gravity, which are utilized to portray wormholes and dark openings, just work for gravity and not the quantum powers that oversee radiation and subatomic particles. In request to genuinely comprehend the idea of these peculiarities, another hypothesis is required to join the laws of gravity with a quantum hypothesis of radiation. All through the universe of science, this is known as a hypothesis of everything, a solitary hypothesis that can join both Einstein's hypothesis of gravity and quantum hypothesis. Makaku, who is an eminent hypothetical physicist, has been dealing with a hypothesis of everything for a really long time. However, there are bunches of various variants of what this could be. The one in particular that has shown guarantee is superstring hypothesis. Superstring hypothesis joins gravity with a hypothesis of radiation. The hypothesis recommends that subatomic particles are really minuscule vibrating strings and that the universe is an orchestra of these strings. Similarly, as different melodic notes relate to various vibrations of a violin string, various particles in nature relate to various vibrations of a superstring. One of the captivating things about superstring hypothesis is that as a string moves in time, it twists the texture of space around it, delivering dark openings, wormholes, and other intriguing arrangements of Einstein's conditions. This implies that superstring hypothesis not just joins together Einstein's hypothesis of gravity with quantum hypothesis, but in addition makes sense of large numbers of the strange peculiarities that we notice in the universe. However, there's something about this hypothesis that truly tosses a wrench into how straightforward it could have sounded at first. However, in a manner, it makes more sense too. Superstring hypothesis requires 10 components of space-time in which the strings can vibrate. This is very not quite the same as the three components of space and one element of time that we experience in our regular daily existences. 
It's hard to envision what these additional aspects may be like, but physicists have fostered some applied models that can help us comprehend. Consider a two-layered lake possessed by fish that are, as it were, mindful of the components of length and width. To these fish, there is no such thing as level, and they can't even envision what it very well may be like to live in a three-layered world.